All right, guess this is my second time recording this, so here we go. It's Leopard Moth with his first ever anime review. As the Halloween approaches, we all know that uh, it's time to watch scary movies with your friends, and I'm not a scary movie guy, so uh, I grew up with a lot of Japanese kids, so went straight for the anime section on Netflix, trying to find something sort of spooky, more my style though. You know, because a lot of these movies that come out, oh, dude, it's just like the most violent thing or the most oppressive thing where there's no real story. It's just a slasher flick or like a jump scare or something. And I can't with that. I just really can't. So, so scrolling through, scrolling, 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 and everything looks generic and dumb and like just whatever. Finally, something catches my eye. B, the beginning. I read the little description says it's a detective story, but there's something else going on. There's some sort of divine creatures mixed in with the humans hiding amongst them. I'm like, yo, okay, so we're taking, like, fantasy and detective? Like, okay, you're starting to hit two of my favorite genres. And then I watch the little trailer that comes with, you know, all the series have little trailers on them. All right, I realize it's sort of set in a futuristic setting, but there's also like a lot of Victorian landscapes and whatnot. Okay, okay, I vibe with that. And I had just uh, been checking out Denzel Curry's Taboo album, where he uses the letter B. Uh, he replaces it with the number 13. That turns out to be a huge part of the plot. Uh, I might give away some spoilers here. And uh, so I'm watching, right? And the first episode, there's like this murder kidnapping that gives off this like human hunting slash adrenochrome harvesting vibe, which I had just been researching about. I'm like, okay, this is all coming together. I, I gotta watch this. So, you know, I watched like two episodes right then and there. And um, it did a good job of leaving a lot of, I wouldn't say cliffhangers. That can be kind of like a mean word in a way, but... Um, you know, a lot of intrigue, right? So that's what you like in a mystery series. So I'm, I'm checking it out, I'm checking it out, and I'll make this comparison. Right, Death Note. This series starts out feeling like a cross between Death Note and some kind of, uh, shoot, I don't even know, like what's a good, What's well, a good one where, like, the characters transform into some kind of monster, right? I mean, there's so many of those. But then, like, also crossed with, like, Psychopaths, where it's, like, these futuristic detective teams and whatnot. So, I'm like, okay, cool, cool. But just like with Death Note, it felt like there was a point where it jumped the shark. And, uh, if you were around when that series was out, you might remember that when L died, a lot of fans left. You know, they didn't want to watch it because it just seemed like this try-hard move where you're just doing something edgy for the sake of it and trying to, like, Shyamalan the fuck out of it with, like, a plot twist to the max. Well, <sighs> all right, let's go with the positives first. So the character designs. Off the chain, absolutely. Every single one. So much personality. So much style, covering like every base of like every type of character. The the police team, they're all like so interpersonal, like you can really feel their connection. And uh, the villains, they're absolutely insane. It's like frightening, good stuff. And just their look, everybody's look overall is like perfect for their character. And just really nuts. And then like, Early on, there's a lot of this, like, really strange poetry that <laughs> these, like, entities recite. It very much gives off that mystical vibe. Good stuff. There's a lot of dark themes, <clears throat> a lot of cool aesthetics, very beautifully animated fight scenes. So, to me, you know, I was hooked off the bat. But, with all those positives, all the world building, all the atmosphere, all the awesome characters, all the personality, 
There's one important part of the story missing. The story. And yes, there is a story, but like I said with Death Note, how there was a point where I jumped the shark. With this, it's like, oh, they wanted to out Shyamalan that series so bad. It's like, there's a certain point where a switch is just flicked, and I swear to goodness that every episode after that point either had to be written by another writer or just completely their whole plan was to have red herring after red herring and like the thing that the first red herring is covering up is covering up the next red herring and it's like it's all just like the story I swear felt like it was erasing itself every episode just every bit of like plot progression just went out the window and then they do some complete twist and turn and it was kind of not fun because of that like it's very fun to just watch and soak in the energy of like oh it's like these mystical creatures but it's also sci-fi but it's also a mystery but the story oh it just like hurt oh man like for real every like explanation of a character's motive I swear just like went out the window and then like at the last second they would explain something but not really explain it they would like hint at it and then never mention it again or like so many moments that just uh we're gonna like start to go down that path I ah, forget it and it just never goes anywhere I guess maybe one day they could come out with like five more seasons of it and explain all that but I, I really don't think so like the characters from this like institution they're supposed to be like the reincarnations of these gods but are they it's like unsure if they're actually just clones or like what the hell it is and they can like sever their body parts and reattach them to each other or something because one dude has like a sword arm so he gives it to like the king like i don't know how is that explained it's not it's never given any sort of explanation are they mystical or are they like just scientific experiments and just i don't know it was really frustrating like there's this tablet right and it's got these inscriptions and only the one character was able to <sighs> it's basically this ancient writing that explains the destiny of every character in the series but then it's almost sort of hinted at later that that was like planted there by the main villain and it's not even real and it's just part of a manipulation and it's the kind of thing where like every episode turns out to be like no this didn't really happen that was a manipulation for like this other thing to happen this was sleight of hand you were looking over here it was right here that's like cool in theory but when you're getting invested in the series and like literally nothing pays off because it's all just like yanked away at the last second ugh, i wasn't feeling that and just like 100% like de down to the wire at that point it was like every moment they were just getting rid of like everything that was being worked towards like at one point the king or god or whatever this little guy is uh he's talking about the girl he likes that he's been chasing the whole series trying to like rescue her um he basically like briefly mentions that their purpose the reason they're so connected is to like carry everyone's memory and their soul or something into the future what that even means is never explained it's just like lost completely and then like for some reason the location of that tablet gets rid of his ability to regenerate his cells but not any of his other abilities why no idea no idea no idea whatsoever and then at the very end of it the enemy the main enemy turns out to have the most bullshit reason for everything happening and the worst part is despite it being a mystery series the first time they showed that guy i just knew he was the baddie 
oh, I can't even tell you how. I just knew. It was just like, it was too obvious. And, but then like, it, there was no payoff. It was like, he's just doing that because he likes to kill, basically. 100%. That's, he just likes killing people. So after all of this convoluted story that trails off into all these branches that never have fruit growing from them, no explanation whatsoever, uh, the guy just felt like doing all that. And that's what caused it. And what's worse is the main character, well, one of the main characters, the detective, is a pretty cool character, but he says in the series that he, like, has been on the case for eight years. So he's been, like, I watched this for, like, two weeks. Like, every couple days I'd, like, throw in an episode. But, like, eight years of that, and then it just turns out to be, like, just cause. Oh, dude, hell no. Uh, yeah, it was just too many plot twists. And there's, like, a scene at the <laughs> After you watch the last credits, there's another end of credits scene that's another plot twist like dude come on we get it we get it you like m night Shyamalan. that's that's pretty much how i want to review it the best way to sum the series up in my opinion uh early on the female detective who's like up and comer promising and trying to be the best she basically uh says you know we don't know anything about this case. So I think our best course of action is to not think about it and just keep keep moving forward and just don't think about it. Little did she know, she was also describing the best way to watch the series. It's fun, great artwork, great animation, excellent characters, excellent environment. Storyline, I wouldn't say non-existent, I'd say self-destructive. Anyway, this has been the first of potentially more, or potentially the only, anime review on my channel. I hope I didn't scare you. Why would I have scared you? Why did I say that? Fuck. Have a happy Halloween.